everybody, Big Red here. I am uh, at Gen Con 2015. We are at the FFG booth, and I am with Anton Torres, uh, the international marketing manager for FFG. Anton, if this is a huge, this is a, the 20th year anniversary. This is, this is our 20th birthday. And our 20th birthday. And this is looking, it's a, it's as, uh, uh, as, as always, it is a huge, huge booth, so many products, and FFG has just been stealing so much of the oxygen in the show. There's just a giant amount of awesome new products. So, Anton, what do you got? So, this, uh, at, at, with our 20th, uh, and at, in the year of 2015, we brought, again, dozens of demo tables, and what we traditionally do is we'll not only debut games here that uh, you have known about, but now you can actually get your hands on and try, like Mission Red Planet, for example, which is a reprint, a republication of something in a new edition that was released a number of years ago by Bruno Cathala and Bruno Fiduti. It's an awesome game. We are sending uh, uh, astronauts to Mars to try and colonize and gain resources, but there's saboteurs and there's all sorts of backstabbery uh, that you can accomplish in the game. Um, very fun, super cool and, and beautiful. So that's here and we actually sold that at the booth and that has sold out midday Friday. Okay, so then. we both debut games here for sale. Uh, we debut games here for demo and uh, it, it exploded. Uh, game of Thrones 2nd Edition, uh, the card game that we launched about a decade ago as the first licensee of George R. R. Martin for a Game of Thrones book series is has now been rebooted in a brand new edition. It's a forty dollar box, just like the original uh, that you have known for many years. But uh, the mechanics have all been reconsidered. The game flows better, and everything that we have learned over ten years of living card game design, this customizable card format that is not. Uh, blind by or randomized in any way, we've incorporated into this game. So vie for the Iron Throne, spectacular new art. Uh, we now have eight houses in the box, including the Night's Watch, which people, people were very excited uh, for. And that also sold out. We launched a great deal of X-Wing content uh, for sale. Uh, X-Wing Wave 7, which includes uh, two scum and villainy ships, uh, the Cross Fighter, um, we've got uh, Bosks, Houndstooth was here, um, and we had the large Imperial Cruiser, which is for the epic play in X-Wing, where you have around 300 points or more on the table, and you really drive the narrative elements of X-Wing to the fore. Uh, that sold out. All these things have appeared in the booth. And I can go on and on and on, but on the, on the subject of X-Wing, I want to tell you that, as always, we, we have announced new products. And uh, in the world of X-Wing, people have been asking, and we, we read this online, we understand that people question what might be next, what is left for FFG to explore on the tabletop. And so we said, well, the Mist Hunter is going to appear. And our goal is that these uh, Wave 8 ships are going to hit by the end of the year. It might be just at the turn of the year in early 2016, but we're hoping right there at the end. Uh, so the Mist Hunter and the Punishing One. So uh, the last two of the Bounty Hunter ships now will arrive. There were resins that are unpainted. These are still prototype, uh, not licensor approved ships, but they're in the case. And uh, of course, a new, a new, uh, a new setting, Star Wars Rebels. Star Wars Rebels is hugely popular, and hopefully you love it and you've given it a shot. I think it captures the spirit of the original trilogy in an incredible form that is really broadly, uh, uh, broadly entertaining. But some iconic ships, we've got the Inquisitor's Tie that will hit the table for X-Wing again by the end of the year. And uh, then we have this uh, Imperial Assault Carrier, which has four posts underneath the uh, wings of the ship where you actually attach and affix TIE Fighters. So the TIE Fighters you already have uh, fit in upside down into the posts of the ship. And there are mechanics where uh, you use this as a deployment vehicle. You can actually take that carrier with up to four TIE Fighters affixed, deploy them uh, after you've moved into position uh, on, on the tabletop. And last but not least, the most iconic ship for us from Star Wars Rebels is the Ghost. Uh, so if you've seen the show, the Ghost is a ship in which the crew travels and that's, that's, that's their home. The Ghost will hit the tabletop. It's a massive, massive, chunky ship. Again, unpainted in the case if you have images. Uh, I've seen some pre uh, some paint uh, samples that are freaking phenomenal. And uh, the Phantom, which is a small shuttle that uh, disembarks from the back, is also in the box. And again, mechanically, we want to really uh, bring that story to light. And you'll see how those two ships work together uh, in support, the, the Phantom in support of the Ghost, because it is one set of crew, just in two different ships. Let's go back to uh, Starship Combat. We've got Wave 2 for Star Wars Armada in the case, 
and for the first time we've revealed the actual painted ships. Uh, these are final painted ships that are in there. They look spectacular. Um, those will hit the table uh, in addition to a set called Rogues and Villains, which is a single pack that has a bunch of small starfighters. So rather than large capital ships, we're going to add the Millennium Falcon, we're going to add the Slave One, we're going to add Bosk's Houndstooth, and, and uh, the Punishing One is there, there are a few other ships. Uh, and they have very different rules from what you have seen so far with the squadrons. Like the squadrons um, activate in a particular way. These uh, iconic characters are going are gonna to work uh, they're much beefier, they're much more substantial, and they're going to have a, they're going to hold a, a near a near dear place on the table for you. So that will all be out later uh, this year. Uh, Imperial Assault, Star Wars Imperial Assault, massive, massive game, hugely successful launch, and it continues to be. We uh, we debuted for sale the first small box expansion, which is a mini campaign called Twin Shadows. Twin Shadows introduces uh, Boba Fett. So Twin Shadows, with a couple of new hero characters, uh, we've got four, uh, four sand people and four of the heavy stormtroopers, a couple of ally and villain packs in support, and we announced the next expansion is Return to Hoth. This is a big box expansion that is filled with a campaign, a full campaign that's of the size and scope that you find in the original set. So uh, you know, a couple of dozen uh, scenarios that are all linked together. Uh, Leia is going to hit the table, so Leia Organa is, is one of the characters that is available in that release. We've got Snowtroopers, we've got uh, Wampas, um, and we've got rules for the skirmish players. They're going to allow for up to four players to, to duke it out on the table. So you want to see multiplayer skirmish? This is coming in Return to Hop. So massive campaign, new skirmish rules, uh, and new content for all of it. Hugely, hugely uh, exciting product. Uh, last but not least, we have Warhammer Conquest. So Warhammer 40,000 Conquest is a living card game, so it's a continually expanding card game uh, that is uh, not blind by. It's a fixed distribution model set in the world of Warhammer 40,000, and we debuted for sale a Tyranids expansion called The Great Devourer. And in, uh, in Warhammer uh, 40,000 Conquest is a very aggressive game where each player has a warlord that represents them and then the other, uh, the other cards, the other characters and, and units that hit the table, uh, aggressively attacking your opponent and then their warlord. The Tyranids are unique, and you, you know this. You guys uh, know the Tyranids are, uh, are, are a brutal life form and so this required a special dial. The dial has actually two uh, life trackers and uh, you, have, you can have multiple Warlords in play. So Tyranids have interesting new mechanics that reflect the theme, and, uh, and that sold out as well. You should check it out. Great Devourer for Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. There is one more thing that we announced at Gen Con here that I think uh, you will totally dig, and it is a cooperative card game called Warhammer Quest, the adventure card game. Uh, I know you, you probably know what Warhammer Quest is. We're looking at Warhammer's Old World, it's the classic fantasy setting. But uh, each player takes one of the iconic characters. There's a Dwarven Ironbreaker, there's an Elven Archer, there's a Warrior Priest, and there's a Bright Wizard. Each character has the same four basic action cards. They sit in front of you. But how those actions actually execute is unique, and it's about uh, working together in this cooperative game, uh, d uh, going through multiple link scenarios, dig digging deeper and deeper into the story, coordinating your, your, the actions that you take, aiding the other players to help them uh, defeat Skaven and Goblin Scriptures and, and, uh, and Orc Boys and all sorts of stuff. Very cool, a lot of fun, 40 box, small box, so it's portable, it plays fast, it's easy to learn, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, we, it, it caused lots of high fives as we were playing, I'm like, that's, that's what I'm looking for, and, uh, and super, super compact, so you should check that out as well. Alright guys, that was it from FMG, and uh, thank you Anton, as always, absolute pleasure, and that's it, Bell Souls fans, catch you, catch you later.